Hi, this is Dan Whitney with the Whitney Law Firm in Towson, Maryland. Today we're going to talk about a recent uh, bed bug case settlement in Baltimore City. Uh, it was a settlement for $135,000 on behalf of our two clients. And the settlement involved our clients being moved into a, uh, an apartment that was known to be infested with bed bugs by the landlord. But of course, the landlord forgot to mention that when he, when he presented the lease uh, to, the, to these two individuals. Now, Baltimore has a huge problem with bed bugs. There's no secret about that. Uh, I think Baltimore is now number two on the bed bug list for cities on the list issued by Orkin. Um, every big city has bed bug problems. Um, Baltimore, uh, I think, probably has more than its share. The landlords in Baltimore, based on my experience in bringing lawsuits and speaking with clients, uh, the landlords in Baltimore are a special breed, especially the Section 8 landlords. Uh, who seem to be often completely heartless. Uh, they simply don't care about the well-being of their tenants. Uh, God forbid they should spend a few hundred dollars to make sure somebody's apartment does not have bed bugs, inspect the adjacent units, and deal with any problems. They'd often rather just let their tenants get bit, ignore the complaints, and, uh, and save a few dollars. But that math does not work when um, they end up getting sued and paying out you know, six figures when uh, a few thousand in treatments would have done the trick. So in this particular case, what happened is this, uh, a, a young couple uh, engaged, were looking for an apartment and they found a unit. Um, it was a row home in the city and they signed a lease and moved in. Now, as what typically happens when somebody has rented a bed bug infested apartment, a few weeks go by and they started to notice these little red itchy bites on their skin. and. At first, they didn't know what it was, but finally, I think about four weeks in, they finally saw the first bed bug, and that's when they put two and two together. Now, what they did then is they texted the landlord, which is always smart to do because it creates a written record, which can be very helpful for litigation purposes, and they asked their landlord, hey, did you ever have a problem with bed bugs? We just moved in, and we've started getting bitten by these things, and you know, what do you know about this? And the landlord actually said, yeah. I, the last people had them. They moved out because of it. I've been trying to treat it. They're hard to treat. Um, but don't worry, I have something in mind. I'm going to heat treat them. So the clients, you know, not knowing any better, because not everybody knows a whole lot about bed bugs, they said, okay, well, I guess he's going to try and work on it. So the landlord comes by with a, a homemade, essentially a homemade propane heater, and attempts to do his own heat treatment of the house to kill the bed bugs. Now, a proper heat treatment generally costs thousands of dollars. It's done for an extended period of time, several hours. The temperature is monitored extremely carefully. There's a chemical uh, component that is uh, applied to make sure uh, as the dwelling heats and the, and the bed bugs try to flee, they go through the chemicals, which then kills them that way if the heat doesn't get them. Um, but the point is, a homemade uh, homebrew heat treatment is not going to work, and of course, to no surprise, it didn't work here. Uh, all it did is it made the problem seem to go away for a few days. Some time passes, our clients are still being bitten, and they continue to text the landlord. Now, crazily enough, the landlord writes back after they say, hey, this is still happening, your heat treatment didn't work, and he says, well, I want to see... Uh, how many bugs there are, or how bad the infest, infestation is, something like that. Can you just sleep there a few more nights? That'll draw the bed bugs in, and then I'm going to apply some more treatments. Now, you might say to yourself, this sounds absolutely crazy. Why would anybody do it? Well, people do things because sometimes they have no other choice. They may not have money to go rent a new place or stay at a hotel, and many people with bed bugs are very conscience, conscious of the fact that wherever they go, they may potentially be spreading an infestation with them, and they don't want to do that to other people. They're far more decent than the landlords that put them in this mess in the first place. So our tenants kind of grinned and, and bared it for a while and, and until finally it reached a point where after the landlord's numerous treatments, it simply was not working. And they decided, uh, they texted back and forth and said, hey, just let us, let us break the lease, let us move out. And the landlord said something like, well, if you forfeit your security deposit, then I'll let you move out. And they worked it out and they left. So sure enough, then they, they Googled for bed bug lawyers in Baltimore and they found our firm uh, and gave us a call. 
And we filed a lawsuit right away because you're not, landlords are not supposed to lease infested apartments to people. We filed the lawsuit right away and we got all the records from the landlord. Now, as part of litigation, we, uh, in these apartment cases, we get not only the treatment records, if any legitimate treatments have been done by a company that keeps records, but we also get records of who are the past tenants. Because the past tenants are the individuals who, when we speak with, they're often very willing to share their experience and say, yes, uh, yes, I had bed bugs, I reported it, and you know, X, Y, or Z was done. So in this case, we found out uh, from the prior tenant, they had in fact left because the bed bugs had not been properly treated. Uh, and so with that, um, that, was, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin. Plus, we already had the landlord's text messages confirming, oh yeah, we had that problem, I tried to treat it. So it was a strong case, um, and we negotiated back and forth, and we ended up at a resolution of $135,000 to settle, uh, which is a strong result in, in a case such as this. Um, and is, uh, you know, there's no typical settlements, but it's a range where these sorts of settlements um, can often end up. So, of course, if this happened to you uh, in any state, I suggest you, you look around in your state and see if you can't find an attorney experienced uh, in dealing with bed bug problems. Uh, of course, um, as an as a interim uh, measure before engaging in a lawsuit or perhaps even before that, you may want to reach out to the local code enforcement or health department file a written complaint and that sometimes will get landlords to take action, uh, professional action, which is almost always far better than the self-help treatments that landlords often apply, which are totally um, ineffective usually. Uh, so uh, if, if this uh, issue, bed bugs, has happened to you in Maryland, please feel free to contact me and my office. We'll see if we can figure out uh, a way to go forward with your case. Um, you're certainly entitled to a free consultation. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. If you've got any questions about bed bugs uh, or would like to see a topic on another subject involving bed bugs, please just leave it in the comments. Uh, thank you very much and take care.